Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that this morning that we come before you, please unfold your words before us so that we can so that we can have more desire for you, that we can understand ourselves more. So please teach us how to run to you and put our trust in you. And in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So good morning, brothers and sisters, to good morning, brothers and sisters, to those you are online on offline. So good morning to every one of you. So today we have we will come to chapter twenty one of book of First Samuel. So what is happening here? So actually, when you read this chapter, it is not that difficult to you. But how is it related to us? The how come when David fled from Saul, the first two places he went to were these two places, and why was that? And in chapter twenty, is talk about、uh, the farewell between、uh, Jonathan and and Samuel, and David. So he it tells us that、uh, David was、uh, running after running for life. So today, for example, when something big happens in your life, where would you be going to? So you know that you cannot stay back in the old in the previous place. So where are you going to? Or maybe can I put in this way? Why would you come to six one one? What brings you to six one one? Actually, this is the same question. So today, David has come to Nob. So in this chapter, David has come to Nob, and he would like to meet a priest called Ahimelech. So I've been pondering over a period of time how come he would like to come to the city of Nob. So actually, the city of Nob was the place where the tabernacle, where the tabernacle of the Lord was. So in fact, David would like to come to see God at Nob. So you know that at Shiloh, because of the battle with the、uh, Philistines,、um, the whole capital was destroyed. So in the previous scriptures, we are told that、uh, the tabernacle, I mean the Ark of Covenant, was captured. So may I put in this way, God was throwing His temper because why? Because the Israelites had never been、uh, respectful to God. Because why? Because whenever there、uh, there was the battles, they only took the Ark of Covenant as a as a kind of weapon. So that's why finally the glory of God needed to depart from the Israel. And actually, this is the name of the grandson of Eli. That is Ichabod. 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 Ichabod means glory, and Ichabod means. Uh, no more glory. The glory of God has departed. The glory of God has departed from Israel because the Israelite looks down on God. So that's why God allowed the Philist the Philistines to take away the Ark of Covenant. But if we still remember all these stories. Wherever this Ark of Covenant was carried to, then、uh, that would be the break. That would be the bad luck in that place. For example, the image of the idol would fall down, and even all the people of the whole city would suffer from the tumors. So everyone was、uh, in panic, was in fear. So that's why they moved the Ark of Covenants from one city to another city. But wherever the Ark of Covenants land or arrived, it would bring a、uh, bring the catastrophe. It would bring the disasters. So that's why finally the Philistines decided to、uh, bring back the Ark of Covenants to the Israelites. But anyhow, there were still a lots of disasters. 
Because why? Because the Ark of Covenant was mistaken as a weapon for the battle, and finally it became the bat,、uh, the vehicle, ah,、uh, the tool of、uh, disasters. So that's why、uh, the Israelites had not then the Israelites dare not to touch this Ark of Co Covenants for a long time. While the The tabernacle of the Lord was rebuilt at Nob, and that's why the high priest was serving there. But yet, the Ark of Covenant was not there; was absent. But there's,、uh, but that's the showbread. But I believe that that we still have the. So there still have、uh, there was still the effort, and the famine. So they could still, all these things were still there in the in the tabernacle. So that's why when David came to the city of Nob, his purpose was to inquire of God. But I would say that this is a very low level of ministry. Because why? Because the Ark of Covenant was still not in the tabernacle. So it means that God's presence, God's presence was somehow very religious and very superficial at that time. So that's why in the scripture it never mentioned that the city of Nob was the city of worship for God. So that's why it is only mentioned that the city of Nob was only a city for priests. I will still remember that before when David killed Goliath. Actually, at that time, I started to ponder over the scriptures with some doubts. Because why? Because David at that time was holding the head of、um, of Goliath to Jerusalem. But you know, at that time, Jerusalem was not yet the city of Israelites. Because at that time Jer Jerusalem st was still called the city of Jebusit, so it was in in the land. It was the land of Benjamin. But since King Saul had become the king, he never tried to, to attack or drive away all these Jebusites. Jebusites. And while at the same time, the palace of King Saul was in Gibeah. So the palace of King Saul was actually in Gibeah.、Uh, if you remember that at Gibeah there was uh, uh, the Levites、uh, and his、uh, concubines were、uh, were raped and were killed there, and that was the hometown of、um, King Saul. So you can say that Gibeah was not a very good place with good reputation. But anyway, it was the hometown of King Saul, and King Saul was、uh, growing there. So actually, King Saul actually originally was a very simple a farmer. Of of ah, so actually at the start when he was asked to be the king, so he didn't know how to do it, and he did. So, but deep down in his heart, he did not really have a very a good perspective about himself because he had a very low self esteem of his self of himself, and also for Saul, he never thought of driving away Jebusites. But yet, when David killed Goliath and he brought his head, the head of Goliath to to uh to Jerusalem. When I have studied the Bible for many times, and then when I recall all the things, and then later on I use my、uh, perspective, I look at the whole thing with the new perspective. David would like to, so David would like to tell all the Jebusites that Jebusites that、um, he really treasured the city. So because one day God would like to use the city, so actually it was a very、uh, a very suitable place because that is、uh, the place in the middle between the northern part and the southern part. But what about the Saul that he that King David killed the Goliath? So,、uh, so actually, it is um. So you know, in the battle. 
So, you know, uh, uh, usually in the ancient time, in the battle, when you capture something, uh, when you plunder something from the wall, right, then you will put all this plunder into the temple. So that's why the sword of Goliath, I mean, the sword to kill Goliath was put in the temple at the city of Nob. So why did David would like to meet uh, Ahimelech at Nob in the first place? So Ahimelech was the great priest at that time, was the high priest that time. But yet the scriptures never mentioned that he was the uh, high priest. He on, The scriptures only said that he's the priest. But in fact, he was the one who was in charge of all the priestly teams. So that's what the scripture actually was not very direct when it mentioned this uh, Ahimelech. And she, he is the third generation grandson of Eli. So you know Ichabod, right? Ichabod. So you know Ichabod. Ichabod means that the glory of God has de departed. And Ichabod actually got his own brother. And actually, Ahimelech was the son of the brother of Ichabod. So that's why the Eli's families, I mean, the, the priests, the high priests of Eli's descendants were serving at the city of Nob. So even though, yes, the tabernacle of the Lord was built at Nob, but it never mentioned that, in, but the scripture never mentioned that Ahimelech was the high priest. But now imagine you were King David and you were running for your life and you needed to run for your life. So where would you be going if you need to flee for your life? Where would you be going? I just find that it's like a kind of adventure games. Have you ever played this kind of games? So it means that when you have a wand in the games, then you will be given some weapons as the reward. And then maybe, and somehow there will be some assistance for you while playing the games. So usually in this kind of adventure games, you will not be knowing what will be happening uh, in the games. So that's why today I would like to give this passage a theme that embark on the faith adventure. So David actually has embarked on the faith adventure. In this adventure, actually in this life adventure, there was no boundary and there was no guarantee. Just like when it was my first time to go to U.S., it was a very strange place for me. I didn't really know what would be going on and what kind of person I would be meeting. I just knew that I would like to go to the seminary to uh, meet a professor whom I have been admiring for a long time. But unknowingly, by the time when I arrived at the seminary, I just find that uh, he was dead. So there was only a, an arbitrary, there was an arbitrary in the campus of the seminary. I just found that the professor uh, passed away. So, you know, all these things could happen beyond your imagination and expectation. So in the same way, when you came to 611, all the things are beyond your imagination. So I believe that everyone got your own story, got your own life story before you came to 611. I would say that if your lives are like mine, definitely you have been uh, uh, meeting a lot of confrontations and conflicts. And that's why finally God brought you to 611. But you know, for for King David, the first thing that he could um, think of was God. So that's why he came to the city of Nob to inquire of God. So that's why at the Nob, at the city of Nob, he inquired of the Lord. And it was a very good starting point because he looked for God. 
because he was looking for God, especially for us. When you are facing a very big life change and you're not very sure what you're going to do, you're not very sure about your life direction. That I will be, I will say, the best starting point is to come to the church to look for God. So even though, even though at that time the city of Nod was the official proper place for worshiping God, and while at the same time God's presence was not there either, but yet, well, yet it was only a place for the limited worship. I do believe that there was still showbread. They 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 still lights the candle in the temple in I、uh, in in the temple. Have we ever seen? Have we ever find that、uh, King Saul would be looking for Ahimelech? Actually, Ahimelech was the priest, but yet King Saul never consulted Ahimelech. So that's why, from that point, it could tell us that、uh, the relationship between King Saul and God was very distant. So actually, the first time for King Saul to look for Ahimelech was only a kind of argument and confrontation. He never showed the respect for Ahimelech. So you know, he even though he was a king, but he never showed respect to the servants of God, Ahimelech. But yes, for David, he is a fugitive. But the first person that he would run to was to Ahimelech, the priest of God. So we know that this is the temple of the Lord, because in verse six and verse seven, in verse six and seven, that we can find that two times, and the scripture mentioned before the Lord. So verse six, and the priest was speaking to King David. And saying that the showbread which had been taken from before the Lord, verse six. So you it can tell us that it is the temple of the Lord, because this is the showbread being taken from before the Lord, and also in verse seven. In verse seven. And、uh, here we were told that a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, and detained before the the law, and his name was Doak. So for verse six and verse seven, I would like to highlight、uh, the words before the law because this this words happened appear two times. So it means that they are they were definitely in the temple of the Lord. In verse one and nine, so in verse one and nine is say is talking about、uh, David inquiring of the Lord, but but yet uh, the uh, the priest Ahimelech, when he heard of David coming over to him, he was very he was in fear. He was wondering how come David would be going to to him. So do you remember that King Saul? Did ask David to be the commander of the army. So, because he was a very smart person, I mean, David was a very smart person, and a lot of people would be following him. But how come today suddenly David would be coming to the temple of the Lord to look for the priest Ahimelech? So obviously, Ahimelech was not、uh, was、uh, was not clear of what's been going on in the palace. He didn't know anything about a、uh, king so. Throwing the temper at、uh, King David and even wanted to kill David with his spear, he didn't know the argument between Jonathan and 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 King Saul as well. He didn't know all these things. He didn't know all these things because all these things were happening at Gibeah only. So actually, David went to Samuel as well at Ramah. So now, from Brahma to city of Nob. So all these places are not very distant or far away. So Brahma was at the northern part of Gibeah, 
and the city of Nor was at the uh, southern part of Gibea. So both of them were on the mountain. When Jesus said that well, uh, the city were built on the mountain, while at the same time said the temple of the Lord was built on the temple, Jerusalem was on the hill. Actually, the meaning of Nor means high place. It should be around Jerusalem. But yet King Saul never went to Nob to inquire of the Lord. And instead, David, when David was a fugitive, he needed to flee for life and he went to the city of Nob to inquire of the Lord. So that's why uh, the priest Ahimelech was very fearful. And then... So that's why um, uh, David answered that. So please don't let anyone know that. Please don't let anyone know that I have come. Don't ever let any people know about it. Of course, he didn't really. I mean, he here means that uh, David. That David never told uh, uh, Ahimelech the the real truth. So that's, and he also said that the other young fellow, the other young fellow would be meeting him somewhere. So the first thing he asked for was the bread. So of course, because he was fleeing for life, the first thing he needed was the food. So that's why he went over to the temple of the Lord to look for food. So of course, now we were, we are now talking about the ritual um, of the temple, whether you need to be clean or not. So he came before the high priest. So actually, he came before the high priest. He was look. He was looking for help from the Lord. So through the, this journey of um, running for life, he was asking God to provide him. I do think that this is a very important issue. So that's why the priest uh, Ahimelech gave him five bread, five loaves of bread. So actually, the showbread was supposedly for God. So if you still remember the showbread, so of course, definitely God did not need to take the showbread. So all these showbread of the 12 tribes were presented to the Lord right before the Lord. So in, uh, in the Old Testament, in the Moses, in the books of Moses, and God really remember the needs of Israel. It means that God will provide all the food for the Israelites. Actually, God himself did not need to take all this showbread. But yeah, this is the way that uh, for the Israelite to remember God, while at the same time to tell the Israelite that God remember their needs as well. So that's why right at the moment, Ahimala gave all this uh, show bread to David, because this is the only bread that they have in the temple of the Lord, because this is the bread that God really remember the needs of the Israelites. And in verse 7, this is a very special verse. Actually, it's the conversation between Ahimelech with David. But suddenly, there's another person coming in. That is Doak. So he's the chief of the herdsmen of King Saul. So what was this post about? We don't know because there's not any information about it. But what we know is that he's an Edomite. Why would King Saul? Why would King Saul ask an Edomite, a Gentile, to take up such an important post? So obviously, it tells us that uh, King Saul did not have the sense of security about himself because he could not believe, he could not put his trust in the Israelites. He got a very strong paranoid. He got a very strong, heavy paranoid. He was very uh, hesitant. He was very doubtful about all the people, especially the Israelites. But instead, he assigned this big post, a high post, to this Edomite, a Gentile.
because why in the land of Israel there would not be any uh, people network for this Edomites then this Edomites would be very faithful to him so later on when David uh, ran to Gath he also he also went with the same mentality but how come suddenly in the scripture it talks about Doak? Well, actually, the, 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 he is not part of the story, supposedly. So I believe that the storyteller would like to remind us of something. Suddenly, suddenly David met Doak or saw Doak. Or maybe when Ahimelech was talking to David, so he he expressed himself he expressed himself that saying that well be careful because there's someone who belongs to the people of king saul so that's why we need to be careful about our speech because here we are told that this door was left before the lord and he belonged to saul so how come this uh, door of, of uh, such a high post would be detained before the Lord? It might be because he was asked to take watch there, or maybe he was uh, he was detained there, or maybe he was asked to perform some uh, cleansing ritual. So this is a kind of his duty. So that's why he needed to stay at the temple of the Lord at that time. So that's why in the conversation between Ahimelech and David, they, they took notes of Doak, the presence of Doak. So that's why they needed to be very careful about the conversation. So of course, when you say you want to see God, then right away, then you can see God. There must be some challenges. There must be some crisis. But my question for you is that, would you be still daring enough to move on to see God? So, so or maybe I put it this way, hey, because there's danger here, shall we move to somewhere else? Or maybe just like uh, when you are playing the surfing board, so the waves are very big, but if you are standing on the surfing board, so if you are daring enough, then you can still ride on the wave. Or maybe will you tell yourself that, well, since the waves are so big, uh, then we should, we should go to somewhere else, don't play the surfing anymore. So actually it is talking about our faith, uh, how much faith that we have. So today, are we the one riding on the surfing board? Are we the ones standing on the surfing board and riding on the waves? Or are we running away from the waves? So anyway, at that time, David was asking Ahimelech. And because uh, he was uh, telling Ahimelech that uh, I do not have the spear or a sword. So do you have any sword for me or a weapon for me? So for David, the weapon uh, was very important, and it was a very important weapon because uh, this sword was supposedly with uh, Goliath, because uh, David did use this sword to cut away the head of Goliath. And verse 9, So the sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elag, there it is wrapped in the cloth behind the ephod. If you, if you will take that, take it. So he is asking David to go there to take it. For there is no other except that one here. So that is the salt. That is the salt. So when he takes up the salt, so it really gives David a lot of reminders. First, first he could protect himself. So when he took up the sword, suddenly he remembered the city of Gath. Why was that? Because why? Because the city of Gath was the hometown of Goliath. Otherwise, I would not be, I would not understand how come David would flee to Gath. 
and that was the city of the Philistine. Actually, nobody would know what would be happening next up. But sometimes, somehow, there were some signs along. So when he was taking up the sword, and he remembered the place of Gath. So actually, there's another risk. So now let's come to the second paragraph, verse ten to fifteen. Verse ten to fifteen. So, so at Gath, he was asking for protection. At Gath, he was asking for protection. He went to the wrong place. So yet, when he was taking up the sword, it was it was a kind of reminder for him to go to Gath, to Saul. Well, I'm sure that I'm sure that for Saul, definitely he would not be going to Gath to look for David. Because、uh, when King Saul was fighting with Philistine, he was so afraid of the Philistine. But yet, so that's why they, for, that's why for King Saul, he would never be going to Gath to look for David. In verse ten. In verse ten, then David arose and fled that day from before Saul and went to Achish the king of Gath. So that's why David chose to go to the place of Philistines. He didn't think a lot. For example, when he was holding the sword of Goliath, what would be the people of Gath think of David? Because it it was the sword of Goliath, and it was supposedly to be the sword of the hero of his own of their own city. So was David coming over here to declare the war or to show off himself? What would be the consequence? What would be the outcome? But yet the servants of Achish said to him, "Is this not David, the king of the land?" Well, they do, they don't think that King Saul is the king. Because why? Because in the battle, actually King Saul was so fearful, was so afraid and trembling, and instead, David was the one to come out to kill Goliath. So that's why we can say that the servants of Achish got the misunderstanding, and they thought that David was the king of the land. And did they not sing of him to one another in dances, saying, "Saul has slain his thousands, and David has ten thousands"? So who who were the one to sing the songs? So the all these people sing the the people sang these songs in the village of uh, 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 Israel. So what about the Philistines? Actually, the Philistines heard of the songs as well. So you need you see all this folk song have become a kind of pop song for them, from Israel to, from Israel to Philistine. So everybody should have heard of this song. So when David heard of it, he was very scared. He was very scared. He was very scared of the king of Gath. Because he never had imagined. He never, he had never imagined that he was in the, he was in danger. He thought that he could hide himself there at Gath, but yet, but yet he realized that he put himself in a much serious risk and danger. And then in verse thirteen, in verse thirteen, we are told that、uh, King David was pretending to be out of mind. I do think that not everybody could be like David, performing like that. Do you think that you could fake, you could fake like a like a madman?、Uh, I will be very frank to you. I cannot really pretend to be like that. I was just like a potato. I was a、uh, very dumb. I I would believe that I could not really perform like David. But you know, look at David, and David was just like an actor. He could perform just like in a movie. Well, he's very flexible. So he could change himself according to the environment. 
But yet, to be true, since I joined this one one, I have changed a lot already. Wow, long long time ago, I was even much dumber than now. So,、uh, wow,、well, so he, his saliva fell down on his beard. But you know, for me, it's quite difficult to behave like that. You know, every morning I need to make sure that I comb my hair very tightly. Then how could I allow myself to let my saliva fall on my on my lap? So you know, at that time, a lot of people might think that David was out of mind when I was young. Well, when I was young, there's a very famous person who's a very famous、uh, for graffiti. If you if you did go to Kowloon City before, then you'll find a lot of graffiti on the streets,、uh, and all this graffiti saying that. So the king of Kowloon, the new king of China, the new king of China. So actually, all this graffiti was、uh, written. By a madman in in Hong Kong at that time, I never pay attention to all these、uh, small words, all these、uh, small gravity. But I do believe that it was written by the madman. But nowadays, all this gravity was gone. All this gravity was gone. But at that time. So David actually at that time David was、uh, at that time David was at the door of the gates, and he was、uh, scratching on the doors, and he was pretending madness in the hands. So that's why the king was、uh, wondering, hey, how come? Why have you brought him to me? Have I need of a madman that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? So finally. At the end of the scriptures, is、uh, there's an open question: Shall this fellow come into my house? So it tells us that the story is、uh, moving on. So when we read the Bible, it's very exciting because all the things、uh, will be beyond our imagination. We will not be knowing what will be going on and what will be happening. It's the same with our lives as well. Who can tell you what will happen to your life? Who can tell you what will happen in the next week? Who can tell you what are the days? So there might be the different ways. So we might be using the different ways to control our life. But I tell you, none of us can control our lives. But I would say that the first thing that David did was very right. He went, he went to the Lord. He inquired of the Lord, and he asked God for providence, for provision. He asked God for the protection. So that's why he got this、uh, sword. But of course, the second thing that、uh, the mistake that he made was that he went to the wrong place. He went to Gath because he thought that、uh, King Saul would not be going to Gath to uh, uh, to kill him. But actually, that was not a safe place. So that was a decision without enough faith. So that's why finally he need to he needed to bear the consequence of it. But I would say that God is still gracious gracious to David, and God still ah、uh, protects David along the way. So whatever he wherever he went and whoever he would meet, and God still with David, and God still protect him. So for David, he needs to make a new decision, a right decision every day, and wherever he needs to go, and God knows. So today is the same for you and me as well. So we need to be open to God as well. So wherever we are, and in whatever situation we are, that we need to put all our full trust in the Lord that God is with us. So. Um, at the beginning, when I joined six one one, and there was a dean of seminary, he called me up. He said that when you join six one one, then you cannot come out anymore. If you join six one one, you cannot come out anymore. But actually, six one one is indeed a very big church. So there's still a lot of platform. There's still a lot of areas for me to know God more. A lot of room for me to know God more, and right here, my life will be changed by the Lord constantly. 
So you know, in our lives, when we come to the certain stage, we can say farewell to certain things, certain issue, so that we can run into the presence of the Lord.、Uh, may God bless His words. Hallelujah! Shall we all stand together and worship our Lord together? Lord, we give thanks to you, and be wherever we are and wherever we go, and you are the one to know our future. When we put our trust in you, then that we will not be fearful. So, Lord, please strengthen our trust in you. Lord, you are my strength, and you alone are my salvation. Your right hand, in glorious power, will cover me. Yes, Lord, please open up my eyes. Open up my eyes, Lord. Let me see your angel and armies. Though my enemies are closing in, I still trust in you. I still put my trust in you. Lord, you are my strength. You alone are my salvation. Your right hand in glorious power will cover me. Singing, if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? With your spirit, I will keep believing. I will never let you go. Oh, for if my God is with me, whom shall I fail? Whom shall I fear? There is no one like you now and ever. You are worthy, King of Glory. Shall we once again proclaim? There is no one like you. Yes, Lord, please open up our eyes. Let me see your angel and armies. Though my enemies are closing in, yeah, I still put my trust in you. I need to strengthen my trust in you. So, Lord, you are my strength, and you alone are my salvation. Your right hand in glorious power will cover me. Singing, if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? With your spirit, I will keep believing. I will never let you go. I will never let you go. Oh, for if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? There is no one like you now or ever. You are worthy, King of Glory. Yes, Lord. If you are with me, whom then shall I fear? With your spirit, I will keep believing, and I will never let you go. When you are with me, I shall fear nothing. I shall fear nothing. Yes, there is no one like you, Lord, because you are worthy, King of Glory. You are the King of Glory. Yes. Yes, Lord, there is no one like you. Now or now or ever, you are worthy, King of Glory. Let us proclaim once again. Let us proclaim once again. There is no one like you, Lord. You are worthy and King of Glory. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
Yeah, who can be like you, Lord? Who can be like you, Lord? Yeah, because you are the one to do the miracles. Because your work is awesome. So, Lord, we praise your name. So, brothers and sisters, shall we, shall we start with praising our God? Shall we start praising our God? So, because He's the God of doing all the signs and wonders, and because He's the God who lead us to move on, because He's the God who will save our lives until the end. Shall we all shout our praises? To the Lord, Hallelujah, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah! Yes, Lord, we praise your name because you are our strength. You are our our shelter. You are our refuge. Because all the honor and glory belong to you. Because Lord, you are the God of all creation. So that's why today we need to praise your name on high. So Lord, we give thanks to you. You are our refuge. You are our tower. You are our shield. And because you are the shield surrounding us, Lord, we give thanks to you that today that we come before you. So we give thanks to you that you listen to our prayer in Jesus' name. So when David flees for the life, and the first stop was to inquire of the Lord. So, dear brothers and sisters, so for whatever reasons, or maybe you have your own difficulties, or maybe you have the desire, and that's why you come to six one one. So now maybe go in pairs. You can share with the one next to you. Why would you come to six one one? So. What kind of difficulties and what kind of hardship you were facing? You can share with each other right now. You can share with each other right now. Hallelujah. 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 Shambhu Gadaliya. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> We shall be 
Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you that in 2008, when I was seeking a church, because I would like to seek a church with God's presence, a church which can really help me to grow in you, and God, you brought me to 611. That you will enable us to seek you, that we did not, that we do not stay distance from you anymore. And instead, you brought me into six one one so that I can understand of the Holy Spirit, that my whole family can stay in the church, so that our lives have been totally changed. So, Lord, we give thanks to you that six one one church has really become a jarring, pla jarring place of the presence of God. So, Lord, I really give thanks to you. So, Lord, I surrender all these brothers and sisters unto your hand. We come to 611 because of the different reasons. We might have a lot of uh, difficulties. We might come uh, into a difficult situation. We might have faced a lot of uh, storms. But, Lord, you have become our refuge, our tower. That Lord, you're the one to bring us into 611 Church. You bring us into this big family, this tree of life community. So, because of our desire, because of our seeking, so Lord, thank you. Thank you for giving us such a good home, such a good family. So, that's why we come and worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. And this is our hearts, and this is our prayer, and this is our thanksgiving too. Yes, when the storms of life overwhelmed you, God Almighty, He will be with you. Lord, thank you for your guidance. Lord, yes, thank you for your guidance upon our lives. Yes, God. Yeah, you are the one to watch over us. Yes, in whatever situation that we are, even when we are in the storms, God, you are the almighty God, and you are with us. You are protecting us. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah, you are my rock. You are my rock. You are my strong tower. Yes, Lord, you are my shelter, you are my refuge. Yes, Lord. Yes, you are my rock, and you are my hope. And you are my Lord, and you are our strength. Yes, Lord, you are my strength, and you are my Lord. So when David was facing the uncertainty, so in his heart was to go to God and inquire of the Lord. He would like to come before the Lord to ask God for his provision, to ask God for his protection, because David was very sure that all the provision and protection was from God. So brothers and sisters among us, maybe you have just joined us recently, or maybe you've been with six women for a long time. So today among of among us, some of you, some of us, you might be facing the difficulties. It might be the financial difficulties. It might be your jobs. It might be the relationship issue. You might have some uncertainties in your life. But let us really learn from David to inquire of the Lord, to, to inquire of the Lord. So today, in whatever situation you are, so really pray to God. I would like to encourage all of you to stand in the temple of the Lord, to stand in the mercy seat, to stand before the Lord, to ask God, to inquire of the Lord, and to ask God for His provision, and to ask God for His protection upon you as well as your families. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus, 
I would like to pray for the precious kids, the uh, the the precious, the treasure kids, because a lot of the parents, when they face、uh, the situation of the children, they find a lot of uncertainties. They know that they cannot control of the future of their children. But Lord, we do understand that. So Lord, right now we come before you and inquire of you, because、uh, we do believe that you are our strength and our power, and you are surrounding us, and you are the one to give us. The peace as well, and you are the one to provide for us, and、um, be it mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially, Lord, you are the one to provide for us. So we also pray for the brothers and sisters that you might be in the difficulties of the finance. I really encourage you to pray, and I also pray for all of you. I ask God for the blessing to be upon all of you, even though you are in the financial difficulties. But today, since they are willing to observe, uh, to uh, to give the tithing to you, since they are faithful in this area, so Lord Father, may you really grant their heart's desire. May you really provide. Whatever that they need for them as well. So because when they seek after you, when they seek after you, not seek after the world. So Lord, please, Lord Father, give whatever that they need in their lives. Whatever they are need, they need. Lord Father, please give to them. For、um, especially for some families, ah,、uh, for some families because they have some children, they are going to start the new academic year. They might have a lots of a、uh, financial needs. So Lord. Please add on, ah,、uh, add on the finance to them, Lord Father. So right in front of us, we there is a showbread, and God say to us that my children, I remember you, just like God remember the twelve tribes of the Israel. Yes, my children, I can see your lacking, I can see your suffering and your misery. But yet, I can see your name to be imprinted on the showbread because, my child, I really put you in front of me because I always remember you, and whatever you need. And whatever you desire, I will reply to you. I will answer you. I will meet your need as well. And then I can see that, and God puts the show bread, just like in the past when David came to the high priest, came to the Lord, when he asked God for the provision for the food, and the priest also gave the show bread to David. So today, in the same way. So God also gave us the show bread. God also gave us the provision. So let us put up our hands to receive God's provision, to receive God's show bread, because God remembers all our needs. Let us hold on to this show bread, while at the same time we receive the show bread with faith, and we take we partake the show bread with faith spiritually as well. Yes, Lord. Whenever we partake the show bread, and we know that you love us, we know that you remember us. We know that Lord, you know our needs, our danger, and definitely you watch over us, and definitely you will sustain us and protect us. And we proclaim that we will receive strength and provision from you, and definitely we are fulfilled and we are full as well. Lord, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are our rock. Yes, Lord, you are our rock. Yes, Lord, you are our refuge and our tower. Yes, Lord, you are our hope as well. You are our strength, and you are our Lord. Yes, Lord. Again, you are our rock. Yes, Lord. You are our refuge. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are our hope, indeed. You are our strength. You are our Lord. So, brothers and sisters, we have come into the temple of God, just like David. So in his danger, he went to the temple of the Lord to inquire of the Lord. 
But along the way, we will lose our faith in the Lord, because today the topic is about to embark on the journey of, of adventure. So in this journey, we need to keep our faith and our trust in the Lord. So what about uh, we hold, we hold up our hands to inquire of the Lord and ask God to increase to strengthen the faith in you. So shall we ask God to strengthen our faith in Him, even though we might be in the storms. Let us fix our eyes on the Lord. Let us be determined to put our faith and trust in the Lord. Let us believe that God will still provide and God will still protect. Shall we all pray in tongue right now? Shall we all pray in tongue right now? While at the same time you can pray for your needs, pray for your lives, pray for your family as well. So, so that when we are on this journey, that we will not be lacking in faith. So that that we, when we are on this journey, we will not look back because we will continue. We will choose to move on with the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we give thanks to you again. Yes, Lord, please help us. So in the heart of David, he's got the witnesses. Yet even though he sought you, he sick God, yet he still went to Gath. But Lord, please give us grace that we can follow you closely, that we follow you closely, hold on to you. We only seek your help, that we will not choose the way of the world, and we will not use our own way anymore, and we will not defend for yourself anymore, and instead we choose to follow you closely. Yes, Lord, give us the faith in you. Give us the faith, Lord. Give us the faith, Lord, that every day that we need to make the right decision before you, that every day we need to choose you in all the situation, in all the difficulties, in all the storms, we only choose you. So, Lord, please help us. Yes, your anointing, your strength really come upon every one of us. Lord, we give thanks to you. We also pray for the four young men as well. Shall we invite all these four young men to come out? All these four young men are very special ones in our midst because they are going to have two weeks of internship of being the Levites because they would like to experience how to be the Levites and what would be like being the Levites in the temple of the Lord. Shall we put up our hands to pray? Pray for all these four young four young men and women. Uh, let us really pray for them that they will be following God closely, that they fix their eyes on the Lord, and that they embark on the journey of the tree of life as well. We pray for God's blessings to be upon all these four young men and women as well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, Jesus. Lord, we give thanks to you. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Dear Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you. Yeah, this is by your calling that all these four young men and women will really come into the temple of the Lord. So, Lord, definitely you will help and you will provide, you will protect. So, I really pray in the name of Jesus' name that you bless all these four young boys and girls, that they will experience the miracles of God's provision, just like what David has experienced at the temple. And that was the sword for David. And God will provide you, and God will protect you, and God's presence to be with you for sure. And definitely, He will enable you to taste the sweetness of serving God while you are serving in the temple of the Lord. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, may God, Lord, bless all the brothers and sisters, uh, that all of them will experience the help of the Lord, the provision of the Lord. That, yeah, it's true, we might uh, face the difficulties and hardships somehow, but God's presence is with every one of us. And then we will receive the food and the showbread from the Lord and the sword, the protection and the authority from the Lord so that you will not be fearful anymore because all the, anim all the enemies will not find you because all the armies and all the soldiers, all the angels will be surrounding you to protect you.
and all the David mighty months, David mighty men, you need to arise. And God today would like to call you because God would like to use you, and God at the same time God will bless you and protect you as well. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the end of the morning devotion.